do a review today on top on half life now half life is a very unique subject um, because it deals with the ability of a certain element uh, to break down over a period of time so if we take a look at one classic example that everybody can relate to that's taking medication let's say that you are sick and or let's say you have a headache or stomachache and you take Tylenol 500 milligrams every four hours the half-life of that 500 milligram tablet is four hours now let's say you took it at 7 a.m. this morning your 500 milligram dose if you are to take it every four hours that means by 11 a.m. you would have the next dosage but let's say that you forgot to take your your pill because you left it at home and you can't go back and you can't turn around well half-life means that at the next dosage that you're supposed to take you would have half of that sample amount in your system now the next dosage will come around 3 p.m. and you're gonna have half of that in your body then by 7 p.m., once you get home, finally, you would have half of 125 milligrams in your body, which is about 62.5 milligrams. This is the example of a person who decides that, you know, they're going to leave their meds at home. They forgot rushing or whatever the case may be. On the other hand, if you have a person who's taking their dosage like they're supposed to, same case scenario, they start off at 7 a.m., at 500 milligrams then when they take their next dosage they're going to have half of what was in their body from before plus the new amount so together that makes 750 milligrams then the next dosage of what you're going to take at the five um, at the 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 next half-life point of what you need you're going to end up with 125 milligrams plus the new tablet that you need to take and you're going to end up with 625 milligrams now in all actuality you would then have half of that previous half-life so this is another reason why it's important that you take your meds on time like you should uh, one last example you take your pill like you're supposed to you know again every four hours you're going to have half of what you had before and then plus the new dosage amount so that's going to give you 562.5 milligrams plus a little more from the prior um, half-life of the prior medication dosage now one little side note that you need to know when you're taking medications on a time schedule this shows you the ability of that of that particular compound to diminish in your system to expel from your system whether it's through sweat urine or or, or any of those natural uh, means I'm going to show you the first example that deals with half-life and I have it on my screen here and this one deals with the half-life of an iron 59 sample now this is going to come from a sheet that I'm going to show you momentarily so you can go back and replay this video and look at it again if iron 59 sample has an initial activity of 160 dpm disintegrations per minute how much time is required for the activity to drop to 20 dpm the half-life is 45 days in other words every 45 days your sample is going from 160 to the next cycle to the next cycle to the next cycle until we get to the final term of 20 what we want to know is how long it's going to take to do that so what you're going to have to do for the first step is to say you're going to take your initial amount and you're going to divide it by two until you get to the final ending so let me just kind of show you all what you have you have your initial amount which was 160 dpms you have your final amount which is 20 dpms so you're going to divide that by two until you get to a hunt until you get to 20 so i'm going to take that 160 divide that by two i get 80. i'm going to divide that number by two i get 40. Divide that by 2, I get 20. 20 dpms. You're going to stop right there. And what you're going to do is count the number of two half-lives that you see. I see 1, 2, and 3. It took me three half-lives to get there. 
So because it took me three, I am going to now take that into my next step and multiply that three, the number of half-lives that I counted, times the half-life factor. Remember in our prior problem where it says it takes you 45 days, every 45 days for this level to drop, the activity level to drop. So therefore, I'm going to say 3 times 45 days. Get out your calculators. And when you multiply that, 45 times 3 gives us 135 days. So to go from 160 DPMs, to 20 DPMs, it's going to take 135 days. I have another problem for you. Let's say that I am given an example like this, where it says if 15 half-lives are required to reach a safe level, how long must the nuclear waste be stored? The half-life in this particular case is 24,400 years. Now, one thing you have to remember is that in some of these problems, you're going to have to calculate the number of those half-lives like before. And then in other problems, they'll automatically give you the number of half-lives, so they're going to actually prevent you from going through two steps. This problem will serve as a one-stepper. So, I'm, all I'm going to do here is take the 15 half-lives that was given in my problem, and I'm going to multiply that times the 24,400 years. And when I multiply those two numbers, let's see, what do I get? Here is my calculator. I have 15 times 24,400. I get 36, uh, 366,000 years. 366,000 years. The next example. If 20 half-lives are required to reach a safe level, how long must the rods be stored? The half-life cycle is 28.8 years. So in other words, every 28.8 years, your, your sample is depleting. But it's going to take 20 half-lives to establish that. Let's solve this problem. I'm going to take the 20 half-lives that's automatically given in the problem times 28.8 years. Again, I'm going to multiply 20 times 28.8 and I get 576 years. 576 years. Now, what happens if you're given a different type of problem where they're going to give you a sample amount and they're giving you two time frames? How do you solve this type of problem? Here it is. If 80 milligrams of sodium-24 is injected, how much remains after 60 hours? The half-life is 15 hours. So this problem is similar to the Tylenol problem, where I'm giving you 80 milligrams of a certain uh, 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 supplement, and I want to know how much is going to be in your body after 60 hours. So you're given two time frames, 60 hours, and, the, and you're given a half-life factor there. Okay? What you're going to do is divide the time that we want to know how, you know, the, the, the after time by the half-life time. So that's 60 divided by 15, it gives me 4. But what that 4 represents is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half four times. If that was 7, I would have 7 of those halves going across. If it was 3, I would have 3 of those 1 halves going across. In this particular case, though, I have four. So I'm going to multiply one half times one half times one half times one half, doing it four times. Now, remember, we want to know how much remains in your body 
after a certain amount of time. Step two is going to be to take those four half-lives here, that you have the one half times one half times one half times one half, and you're going to divide that out. So you're going to divide 80 milligrams by those half-lives. So that's going to be 80 divided by 2, you get 40. Divide that by 2, you get 20. Divide that by 2, you get 10. You divide that by 2 and stop right there. And you finally get your answer, 5 milligrams. Why do I say stop? Because on the prior screen, you had 4 half-lives. So therefore, because I want to know how much it's going to be in the body, after those four half-lives, I must divide four times by those twos. So therefore, I get five milligrams. Let's do one more. Again, if this goes too fast, pause, rewind, go back through it again. Here's our last problem. If 160 milligrams of Technium 99 is administered, how much remains after 24 hours? The half-life is 6 hours. So again, you're given two time frames here. Okay? 24 hours and the half-life cycle is 6 hours. So every 6 hours, your Technium 99 is depleting in the system. What you want to know is how much it's going to be in your body. So, I am going to go through this problem with you again. I'm going to start with the 24 divided by 6. That gives us 4. This 4 indicates 4 half-life cycles. 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. Now that's going to give us 4 different cycles of dividing that 160 by. So 160 divided by 2, you get 80. Divide that by 2, you get 40. Divide that by 2, you get 20. Divide that by 2, you get 10 milligrams. You're going to stop right there because you're going to count 1, 2, 3, and 4. 4 here represents the 4 twos you should see when you're dividing. You get 10 milligrams. This concludes our discussion on half-life. If you have any questions, email me.